Okay, I thought I would show one of the methods that I use for transferring my image over to my drawing paper. Uh, it's called the grid method. Some people, some people don't like this. Some people say it's cheating. Some people, whatever. But this is what I use. It works for me. Um, I'm using a uh, really cool ruler by see-through. Um, when you have it on a light surface, it's got dark lines. When you have it on a dark surface, it's got light lines. Uh, the problem is, is when you're on a medium gray surface, sometimes they're blending in. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to line this up with the edge of my image. And I've already resized this image in Photoshop to be the size that I want. Uh, this is going to be a 9 by 12 drawing. So I've sized this up to a 9 by 12 after um, adjustments, brightness, levels, things like that. And I printed it out on 11 by 17 paper. If you do not have a printer that prints that big, you can use this exact same method and enlarge it yourself. I am doing half inch squares. You can do 10 millimeter squares. That works quite well. Uh, if you want to enlarge it from something that will print out on say an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, you would make your squares on your reference, half inch, 10 millimeter, whichever you wanted to go with. I have a bit of a glare, so I have to move this out a little bit to see my index lines. And then uh, say if you printed it out at eight by 10, you might, you would do half inch squares on your reference image, which is what this is for me. And then the drawing paper, instead of doing half inch squares, you might do say 5 eighths inch or 11 sixteenths of an inch. And as you transfer your image from square to square, that will automatically enlarge your image. I used to do that before I got a larger format printer. It makes life a heck of a lot easier. Um, like I said, I don't think this is cheating. I guarantee you that this grid method was, has been used for a very long time by some very big named artists in art history. Um, I have seen apparatus that is a wooden frame that has nails in it that they would stretch wire or string across when they were using a subject, live subject, maybe a still life, maybe a model. And they would use the grid method. Now, not all artists did that. Uh, now, if I'm doing a landscape or a floral thing, which I don't do either one of them very often at all. Um, I don't think I've done a floral in 15 years. But um, if I were to do one of those, I wouldn't use this method at all. I would freehand draw it because a landscape... Unless you're doing maybe Mount Rushmore. Or a flower. It does not have to be absolutely spot on perfect. For something like this, that it has to be recognizable for what it is, I want to have my proportions absolutely spot on perfect. And the most reliable, quickest way to do that, I find, this is transferred over with the grid method. So I go along all four sides, marking half inch increments. Now you may have noticed that on the edges here, I started at the bottom and worked up on both sides. It does, usually doesn't matter whether you start at the top and work down or bottom or work up. In this case, I have, this image is just over eight inches tall. I want it to be nine inches tall. Why did I start down here? I'm going to add, when I put this onto my final drawing paper, 
I am going to add a little bit of foreground, about an inch worth of foreground on this, kind of center the car up a little bit more uh, between foreground and background. And that way I know that I can reference an inch up from the bottom of my drawing all the way across and stay consistent and still be able to add that extra foreground in. I'm also going to be doing some changes here. I'm, you know, the, the stuff that's back up in here, it's going to be changed to probably look like just maybe storage cabinets or something like that. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm, 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 no, that's not going to be in here. So uh, this is just strictly for being able to get the proportions of this car. This is a 1959 Corvette uh, removable hardtop. Uh, it's not a convertible. Uh, at least I don't think it has a convertible top on it. Um, this is a former neighbor of ours. It's his car. He's had it since 1960. Um, really cool car. Um, uh, very iconic car. Corvette collectors know what a Corvette looks like. They know the difference between a 1957 and a 1958 Corvette. It has to be right. The proportions have to be right. So that's why I'm doing this. Now what I'm doing right here is I am just drawing my lines down. I'm using an HB lead and a mechanical pencil. This is just a cheapie from uh, a well-known department store. Discount store starts with the W, ends with Allmart. Um, <laughs> at least I think that's where this pencil came from. I don't know. I've had it for so many years. I forgot. It might have come from an office supply store. Doesn't matter. Making sure to keep my lines straight and nice and dark. I don't want them too wide. That's why I'm using a 0.5 millimeter. Uh, if you use a 0.3 millimeter, they might be so small that you would lose them, especially when you have, uh, if these lines were more vertical, and I'm doing this because of the angle uh, that I took the photograph of, um, I didn't have much room in the uh, place where this car is stored uh, to get um, my angle the way I normally would have it, but I can make it work. I mean, if I wanted to, I could change these and make them more vertical. I may end up doing that. I don't know. Um, when I transfer this over to my drawing paper, I probably won't put hardly anything in the background at all. I might put a little bit of indicator for different things. I might not. Um, I usually will not put a whole lot of time and energy into the background when I am first transferring the image over. I focus more on the vehicle because it's you know, the main subject. This one I might I might just leave this the way it is because then I might straighten it up and just have it um, his storage area. I, I haven't decided. I, I'll have to look and see if it will throw the perspective off. So, uh, of course, the bigger, uh, back to the lines, the bigger your project that you're doing this, the longer it's going to take. If I was doing an 8 by 10, I would be done by now. If I was doing a 5x7, I would probably be transferring this already over to my drawing paper. Now, I do apologize if sometimes my hands and what I'm doing goes out of screen. Um, I'm working with a new setup here and learning as I go. So, I want you to see... How I do this, 
like I said, some people say it's cheating. I do not. I don't think it's any any more cheating than a mural artist hooking a LED projector up to their computer and projecting their image up on a wall that they created for painting. I don't feel like it's any different than that. Like I said, this has to be absolutely spot on. You've seen drawings of cars where it looks pretty good, but there's just something off. I want to make sure that there's nothing off. Whether it be the curve of a headlight, a body line, a body molding, the number of teeth in the grill. That's what these are here. They're called, referred to as teeth for those of you that don't know. They look like the car smiling at you. Big old toothy grin. This has to be right. Now, one thing I will not do is I will not directly trace. I would not use serral paper or something like that and trace around it. I will draw this onto my drawing paper, each cell at a time, just a contour outline. Uh, once I get that drawn on, I erase the grid. I do this exact same thing on my drawing paper so that everything's consistent. Move this over here. I may be out of range there. I don't have a monitor right now to see what I'm recording. Like I said, I'm doing some new stuff here. I'm trying to figure it out. But I will um, do this exact same grid size on my drawing paper. I haven't decided what I want to use yet, whether I'm going to go with Bristol or if I'm going to go with another Bristol board or another paper. Okay, now another thing that I do, I index these. This is very important. It helps you to keep from getting lost. How do you do that? I literally number my columns and rows. Now when you're doing this indexing, I do both bottom and top, left and right. Make sure you number going the same direction. You don't want these numbers going, I'm going from left to right, you don't want these going from right to left. So I come up here and I do the exact same thing. Yes, I have numbered one side left to right and the other is right to left before. You get to scratching your head and saying some interesting metaphors, and then you realize what you did. You, you Rick, I'm using pen or a pencil. I don't do this in pen. Um, and then you go back and if it's pen, you got to scratch them out and renumber them. That's why I use pencil. That way you can erase. Now, like I said, I got a little bit of maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe, maybe like five sixty fourths of an inch, uh, five or something like that, uh, five thirty seconds. I'm not sure. I'm not worried about that. That's that little top part there is not even going to be drawn. I'm going to start here. This is just the way I I do the numbering on this. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's just a habit that I've gotten into. If you want to start down here and work your way up, that's fine. It doesn't make any difference. Just as long as you do both ends the same. Get this over here maybe. Uh, 
notice I'm going in the exact same direction again. I double check that. I've done this I don't know how many times. I still double check it. After making this mistake two or three times, you learn not to do that. Double check what you're doing. Kind of like woodworking. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Similar thing. Double check twice, mark once. Then I go back and I make sure that I didn't miss a number because it is really easy to go and get distracted by the cat or whatever, take a drink of coffee and go 11, 13. And it throws everything off. So that is how I prepare my reference image to be transferred over to my final drawing surface. You all have a good evening.